the votation. Yeah? Uh, the, the employees most involved in all the organizational relationships who can better rely on a recognized competence to get organized collectively to have an elective affinity with the left. Independent workers or peasants and so on. And those who cannot do anything but, uh, t but take refuge in some market wage security managed from the top. In short, the most alienated, alienated the most uh, exploited and poor workers feel a similar affinity with the right, generally. The rational stand, standpoint, standpoint, of, uh, standpoint of the fundamental class is to ally with competence, is to break uh, the dominant class and put an end to the functional connivance between the two constituent poles, and that way to release competence from the hold of property. This implies that the fundamental class realizes its own hegemony over the manager and competent and shows able to prevail politically within the left. The alliance is a battle. The elite must be beaten as an adversary by a constant struggle uh, against its prerogative to be elected as a partner. Only under this condition we can speak of a left in capital, assuming somehow the value it proclaims. The left, so, so understood, is not a structure. It is an event that occurs only when the fundamental class is capable to overcome its own division and realize the unity among its, fact, its faction. We could observe in the West the rays of the historical opportunity from the 30 to the 70, the managers and competents together with the fundamental class, while remaining in their class contradiction, converge within the nation states as national welfare state on targets where everyone could partly recognize its own. It was only a beginning, as one used to say. But after the 70s, the neoliberal globalization disqualified this social matrix. The manager and competence tend spontaneously to offer the skills for the service of the new order of dominated by finance. Under this contradiction, the traditional workers' party lose their partners and also their benchmarks and tend to dissolve. Clearly, a prospect of emancipation is to be revealed. Uh, I said that was just the summary of the class confrontation in, in the West. One knows that the course of history was very different elsewhere, for example, in China, under different uh, historical conditions, but in a similar metastructural frame, I think. I drop the next part. Uh 最底下的那个基本阶级就是他分为这个三个维度就是把这个三脉这个阶级结构分为这三个维度嗯嗯还有接下来他就问这种说为什么我们就可以理解为什么这个基本的阶级总是去寻求建立的基因这个阶级去
，就是这个阶级，这个阶层的一个特点，就是就是进行交往嘛，我觉得就是他们的 taking， 就是知识分子，就是这个能力阶层吧。我觉得他们总是爱表达或提出一些什么东西，就是他不一定的这个这些特特点，嗯。而且他提出就就是这个阶层，就是这个经理和这个能力阶层呢，他不是像那个呃资本家或者说那个所有者那样，更不是那么明显的就容易屈服于那种呃就是上为价值就是这种逻辑，就是不是就是那种生产方式那种逻辑，他这个阶层不是那么容易屈服于这种逻辑，所以这个阶层还是有一个很特殊的这个特点，他说了一下。那么在这个方面呢，他就批判那种经典的马克思主义呢，却。就有有给我们带来这个令人吃惊的一种偏见，这种偏见就是就是说他分析的时候总是把它定位为一个资本家，一个是那种呃劳动工人，嗯，但是他认为这个社会实际上是应该有三个三个角色，三个主角，不是两个，嗯，一个就是那个基础基本的阶级，另外是两个统治阶级的两个因素，我们已经反复强调，他说统治阶级这两个因素，一个就是那个所有者，一个就是那个能力精英，我把它能力精英。那么他认为非常呃令人就就他觉得呃比较讽刺的是说呃这个就是说这个斗争或者这个这个政治上这个政治上的这种斗争，这总是发生在嗯这个发生在两个地方，一个是右，一个左。但是这个右和左的划分呢，它不是根据这种嗯这个不是根据这种就是阶级划分的这种二元性来划分。而是根据这种统治阶级的这两级来划分，就是根据所有者和这个精英这两级来划分。然后，呃，他下面就注意到，就是说关于这个，呃，政府统治的原则，就是就是多数和少数，他分析了一下，嗯、呃，他就是说简单的来说，就是右比较就是说想给更多的给那种所有，呃 ，property， 就是给财富或者。所有权更多的权利，而左呢是想给一个组织 （organization） 更多的权利，就是说他们的简单的一个倾向。嗯，嗯，然后紧接着他谈到，对，紧接着我印象比较深刻就是他谈到为什么，就是说，呃。呃，基础阶级、基本阶级为什么想打破阶级统治的话，他必须得联盟这个，就是精英。他谈到了很历史上，他就因为他有一句话叫“联盟就是战斗”，就是说必须联盟他这个呃基础阶级才能才能够就是说取得胜利。但是现实中，他他谈到三十年代到就上世纪三十年到七十年的时候。就是说，这个经理和这个精英能力阶层呢，他和这个基础阶级呢联合起来，然后就是，呃，就福利国家呀，他得争取很多福利什么的。但是七十年代以后，就是说新自由、新自由主义的这个全球化，就把他这个这种社会矩阵，就这个团结的这个联盟呢，给给取消了，就没资格了。那么就这个经理和这个能力阶层呢，他就自自发的他就跟那个，呃，由财团来。就是来控制的那个右的那个方面，就是呃跟跟他联合起来了，就是像为他提供帮助啊，提供提供就提供技术的，他就谈到这个左和右这个关系。OK。Well, I, I will drop、uh, yeah, next part on the, on the world system. Yeah, point two three. I will drop it、uh, so you ha we have some time to exchange, and I come. Uh, to points uh, 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 two four, but I drop also at the beginning. Yeah, the two four is more on、uh, cultural orientation and ideological orientation, and I come to the to the point two four two. Last one, two four two. Point two four two. Two four two. Which page is it? Yes. Okay. Two four two. Yeah. Two four two four two. Okay.、Uh, as for 
the modern political configuration, I will make a few comments on what regards the structure, uh, irrespective of uh, the systemic system, is always world system, uh, systemic relation which over determine the structure. Uh, well, I, I can read the table with you. Uh, yeah, first, <coughs> first line. Uh, class, dominant class, there are two classes, yeah, dominant class and fundamental class. Uh, there are two class factors, market and organization. But these class factors are common resource, resources, and the fundamental class is concerned with uh, market and organization. It's its own research. But <coughs> on those uh, 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 class factors <coughs> are based to hegemonical center. Hegemony in sense of uh, Gramsci. The pole of property and the pole of uh, direction and competence. And the fundamental class is the other uh, uh, pole of hegemony. It is a three actor in the political game or strike. Uh, each of the pole uh, or has its own hegemonical perspective. Pro for the property, the, the perspective is uh, liberalism, but as the property ally with the organization, must have some more or less social liberalism. And the, the perspective, hegemonical perspective of the organization pole, pole of direction and competence, is socialism. That's, I, I put it. And when they ally with, uh, uh, with uh, the finance, it's a more liberal socialism. And the perspective of fundamental class would be communism. Uh, so there are two main ideology, liberalism, but in the time of, uh, of uh, the, uh, the globalization it's neoliberalism, and republicanism would be the ideology uh, of uh, the liberal, of, of the whole of direction and competence. Uh, and the fundamental class as such has no ideology. But, uh, but it... Uh, I would define Marxism as a more or less ambiguous theory. It's a theory of communism, but more or less in the perspective of socialism. Because Marxism is the alliance, is the reasonable alliance of, uh, of uh, uh, the fundamental class and the pole of organization. And Marxism was historically produced as uh, the the theory and utopy of this alliance. <coughs> so, I choose the term liberalism. It's more or less arbitrary. I, I put that very roughly. But I, I think it's, it has its effectivity. Yeah. I choose the term liberalism to refer to the perspective of the owners, of the finance, and socialism to refer to that of the manager and competence. <coughs> These two conflicting social forces, finance and elite, tend to form an alliance either under a social liberalism or the liberal socialism, according to the balance of the power. Neoliberalism has become the ideological tendency of the, of the first, of the <coughs> liberalism, and republicanism, always with some touch of utopia, that of the second. I identify communism as the perspective of the fundamental class. The fundamental class uh, has a good reason to look after an alliance with the latter against the former, an alliance with the competent pole against the, the, fi against the finance pole. Marx, is, it's, in its historical form, appears as a communism, but more or less it depends when. Uh, interpreted in terms of socialism, a popular politic, a po uh, a politics of the people, a, a popular politic of emancipation aims to break the, the class domination. 
uh, aiming to break uh, class domination is only possible when the fundamental class succeeds in teaming with the elite uh, in making alliance with the elite but this time in hegemonic position to put it uh, in, Gr in Gresham terms you see? the idea is yeah, the right direction is this alliance but in the past this alliance was more uh, with the hegemony of the of the elite on the funda fundamental class so communism this is my conclusion bears the enigmatic burden of theory and utopia and I thanks uh, with, I would thanks uh, uh, Professor Sheehan uh, uh, and Professor Weixaupin and also, uh, also my colleagues and Slater. Thank you very much. <laughs> 那么影响经济的因素有这几个方面一个是市场一个是组织还有这个市场和组织联合起来所以说你说它的背后它还要补充这种交往这种这种通过这种交往就公共性能体现出来这种体系第三个就是说谈到这个领导权的这个核心就是